This tutorial is going to take you through the basic basics of how to think about a walk cycle, uh, how to feel it in your body, and then translate that into individual drawings. If you've never done a walk cycle before, this is sort of a rite of passage for animators. You'll do a lot of walk cycles in your life as an animator, and so welcome to your very first one. If you have done them before, this is a great chance to maybe think about it a little bit differently and also to expand into some character walks. So what we will start with is actually some real world observation. We wanna feel things in our body and then be able to take them and translate them onto the characters that we are animating. So we're gonna go outside and do a little bit of walking. Okay, so it's great to be outside, right? And uh, we wanna be moving around a little bit because the way that we start with observation as animators is we start with our own bodies, right? We wanna be feeling how our muscles are moving. Uh, we wanna feel where our balance is, where our weight is, and that's particularly important in a walk cycle, okay? So we're gonna start kind of with some internal observations as we go through the motions of walking. What we're looking for is we're looking for those key poses, uh, the points where our bodies are at its most extreme positions, right? So if you were reading um, some of the guides for walk cycles in Richards Williams' Animator Survival Kit, uh, those are called the contact pose and the passing pose, and then you have the high point and the low point, okay? So we're gonna kind of dis dissect that and try to find out um, what that actually feels like. All right, so let's do some walking. <clears throat> So I'm just starting with a really basic walk, um, just kind of how I would normally walk. And as I go back and forth, we're kind of like, we can slow it down a little bit. So in slow motion, I'm looking for that point, like where are my feet the widest apart? That's as my leg swings forward and I come down into the contact part of the ground that is um, the most extreme distance between my feet. Now, if you get into that pose and you try and hold it, notice that it's actually really hard to balance here. And that's because you're on your toe on the back, right? And you're also on your heel. So you're really not very stable at all. Um, that's actually a good indication of when something is like at its most extreme. It's when we're kind of at our most vulnerable in uh, our balance. Um, so, if I do that, that's the contact pose, right? So you have, it's the first point where your foot touches the ground in the front and you're already pushing off in the back. Whew, it's really hard to balance. Um, so the heel is up uh, and that's an important point. Toe is up, heel is up, all right? So what about the next pose? That's that passing pose, right? As we go through, let me get the other foot forward so you can see, got the contact pose and then we're kind of at the passing pose here, and that's where our feet are closest together. Again, hard to balance um, because I'm on one foot, right? I don't have the uh, action. I don't have any sort of support from this foot. Um, now, when you stop in the middle of a walk, it's really hard to kind of like hold those poses because walking is actually the act of just falling forward and catching yourself with each step, right? Okay, so we have contact pose, passing pose, right? So those are our two extremes of the distance of the feet. Now we're also looking for high and low. So as you go from the contact pose and you catch your weight, you kind of do a little bit of a dip, right? It's like that uh, follow through action that you're having. So when you go down, it's when your head is at its lowest point, right? You're catching your weight and then moving into the next step. Um, as you move into that next step, right? So we catch, we have the low point, we're coming up with the passing, and then just as we pass, we get to that high point. Let me get a little more in the center here. 
So contact, low, passing, high, and then we're back. Um, the interesting thing about a walk cycle is that the anticipation and the follow through are kind of like combined. So you have, you know, the contact pose and you have this follow through of catching your weight, right? Um, in the low pose, but that's also the anticipation for the next step, going up for the next step, right? So anticipation and follow through kind of combine into this cycle. Okay, so the last thing that you wanna play around with while we're out here kind of in the fresh air, walking around, is to think about like different character walks, like different types of walks. So how can you get some variation on those four different poses and all the in-betweens that go in between them? Um, so thinking like, you know, like body posture, foot position, stuff like that. So let's like, let's say you're like a wrangler, right? And you're, so you're out on, on the range and you've been on your horse for 12 hours and you finally get off and like, well, what does that look like when you're walking, right? Probably got a bit of a bowed legs and maybe you're got your hands in your jeans and you're pretty casual. Um, so, you know, walk around like that and think about, well, what does that contact pose look like versus a normal walk, right? So, um, you know, I'm much more on my back foot and uh, my foot is out, pointed outwards here. And I sort of have this much more leaned back posture in my upper body rather than if I was just in a normal pose, you know, you've got kind of like the body that's leaning forward and you're much more straight on, right? So, on the home range. What else can we think of? Uh, you could think of something like, you know, what if you are a prima donna? Walking around like this. Like what's the size of the step that you're taking? That says something about character. Um, kind of what's the tilt of the head? Is it looking upwards? Or what if you're just like really kind of feeling sort of sad and depressed? And you just want to walk like this, right? So this is a great thing to like shoot some reference footage, right? You set up your cell phone and shoot some stuff. You can use slow motion. I mean, we're not rotoscoping, but this will allow us to kind of exaggerate the body postures of different characters. And if we feel it in our own body, then that allows us to kind of connect with the things that we're drawing. So, um, so have fun kind of coming up with some different poses. Uh, think of different types of characters. Walk around, film yourself, get your friends, or I guess we're not really seeing friends, right? But um, people that you're with, maybe they can help you. Um, really good idea to kind of like set up the camera so it's stable rather than doing handheld because then you get some like reference point of like how the foot connects with the ground and stuff like that. Um, all right, well, let's go start drawing. So here we are in Photoshop. And of course you can use any program that you like. One thing that I would suggest is to set up your file with some guide layers so that you can constantly be referring back to them and keep your drawings consistent and the feet locked into the ground and kind of know where you are in the frame count and all of that. I have my character over here and this is just gonna be my size reference. And you can see I sort of have some construction lines underneath and it's best if you are just starting out or even if you're gonna do a more complex character to really have a character that can just be done with basic shapes and just do your rough animation using those basic shapes first because you wanna make sure that you get the pacing and the weight all looking good before you spend the time to go in and do final line work, even color, stuff like that. Also very important is this guide layer down here for the feet, right? So this is gonna be the ground 
You just want to have that be there because uh, having a nice flat foot pressing into the ground gives the character some gravity. Uh, if the ground is not there, then when you draw the foot, you might end up having some inconsistencies in the shape of the foot and the bottom where the bottom of the foot is, and that will ruin the effect of your character feeling like it's really kind of like stepping on the ground. Also up here I have um, a timing chart and this is Richard Williams timing chart for a walk cycle. Now he animates on ones. We're going to animate on twos and so this is going to be a very casual walk. So we have here each step is 12 drawings, right? So this is step one and then this is step two, right? And this is gonna be a cycle, so if you notice, when we get to drawing number 24, then we loop back to drawing number one. The other thing that's very useful is that a walk is pretty symmetrical, unless you're doing something like a limp. And so once we get one step, we just need to figure out how to reverse the legs and the second step is essentially the same as the first step. Let's start out with those key poses that we've sort of determined. Um, we've got the contact, we've got the low, we've got the passing and the high, and then here's contact number two, low, passing, high, and we're back to contact number one. So starting out with the contact, I think that is pretty much the easiest one to draw. Again, I'm gonna kind of just work with sort of basic shapes. Now with Perry here, if you recall, the momentum of a walk is kind of carrying us forward. So he's gonna be leaning forward in his body position, not perfectly upright. I think his bottom needs to be a little bit bigger. And I'm just working really rough and fast at this stage, okay? Not really worrying about how clean the lines are and not worrying about erasing stuff, right? We just wanna get the shape in there. Okay, so there he is. And let's get those legs in there. Actually, he'd probably be a little bit lower. So this is the great thing about working digitally. Make sure your auto select is off so you're not grabbing layers that you don't want to. Make sure you've got the right layer selected. Here we go. And we're just gonna move him down a little bit because those legs are pretty wide apart. So when we draw the legs, for that contact pose. Now remember, the leg farthest back had the heel up, right? But the toe pressing into the ground and the leg going forward had the heel on the ground. It was the first point of contact as that foot came forward. Sort of got a sense of like where those legs connect there and I might do a little bit of erasing just to clean things up. Help me remember which leg is there in front. Okay, so there we go. It's got some skinny legs. Um, I'm leaving off the arms for now because those get complicated. If you're trying to keep track of too many things at once, then you can sort of lose your place. So we'll go back and do another pass and do the arms later. All right, so there's our contact pose. This is drawing number one. Okay, so now we need to add another frame, right? Um, do make sure that your composition is at the correct frame rate. If you look down here, it's at 12 frames per second. That is what we want. Um, all right, I'm gonna turn on onion skinning and I am using the Anim Desin extension, which I love. It makes animating in Photoshop so easy. And I'm gonna make this previous drawing that I have read so that I can keep my line work differentiated. So that passing pose is where the foot is probably gonna be right about in the middle, right? So we're traveling here. Let's start with the body. You know what I can do, again, working digitally is really great because I can sort of just trace my body shape here And then I can move it to where I sort of want it to be. Okay, so if the passing pose, 
with a passing pose. This leg is probably going to be moving up just a little bit. Maybe even a little bit, like if I'm kind of feeling this in my body, I sort of feel my chest sort of pushing out forward as my leg is swinging forward. So um, we're going to kind of tilt it just a little bit there. Not too much up. We're not quite at the high point yet, but going upward there. There we've got our body position. And the foot is going to be halfway between, right? Because we're at drawing number seven, which is halfway between drawing one and drawing 13. This is the foot that Perry is standing on. It is the left foot here. One thing that people do to help make sure that they sort of keep track of the right foot and the left foot is you color in the one that's sort of furthest away from the camera. That way you can kind of remember, okay, left foot furthest away from the camera. So it's probably a little bit of a bend in the knee. And the foot is really nicely connected. That's why this ground line is so important. It's right there. All right, so that's the back foot. But then also, what about this foot here? this right foot that is swinging forward. It's important to sort of measure, okay, where's the knee? Knee from here to here, here to here. Try and get that to be about right. And if this is just sort of a casual walk, I think the foot's gonna be pretty relaxed. We got a little bit of overlap for the foreshortening as it goes into the thigh, and then there we go just to make it a little bit clearer what's going on, that this foot is in, in front closest to us. Okay, so if I turn onion skinning off, there we go. I can take my eraser and clean this up a little bit as well. And maybe give us that little bit of shading just to help us remember which foot is farther away. Okay, so we have two um, poses now. Turn onion skinning back on, we've got our two key poses, we've got the passing, right, and we've got the contact. Let's talk about spacing and how to make this foot slide. This is the tricky, tricky bit. And it's like Perry is on a moving walkway. Our background, if we were going to do a panning background behind this, it would be panning in this direction. The foot would also be sliding along with the background. So if you think of like the foot kind of being locked into a specific point on the ground, right? Um, every frame, that specific point is moving back on this moving walkway. And it's moving back at a constant speed, which means the spacing is going to be even. So we can divide up the space of this widest point into our 12 frames, our 12 drawings, and then we have a guide for ourselves where each foot is going to be planted on each of these frame numbers. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm on my guide layer now, right? Not drawing on the actual drawings. I'm going off of the heel. So the heel on this widest part here um, hits right here. And then we wanna go for the heel here. And so we actually wanna think if the heel was actually pressed against the ground, it would actually be right here. So this is drawing number one. And this is drawing number 13 because 13 is sort of like the mirror image or the flipped leg image of drawing number one. So it'll essentially be the same pose just with the legs opposite. So this is the space that we have to work with. Um, we have to get this foot here back to this exact position in 13 drawings, right? So we already know that the passing pose is drawing number seven. Okay, great. Um, and so as we're dividing up this space here, um, I'll give you just a little bit of a hint. So we know that between one and seven, we have drawings number two, three, four, five, six, right? And four is exactly halfway in between. Now, if you remember that this is moving at a constant rate, right? The foot's sliding back at a constant rate, so we can just divide this in half. We'll get the position that the heel needs to be in drawing number four. So just eyeballing it, getting as close as I can to it. 
So there's drawing number four. Same thing between seven and 13. If we look at our timing chart, we have number eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Number 10 is halfway between seven and 13. So if we go halfway here, this is where the heel of the left foot will be. All right, so now is a little bit of a tricky bit. I'm gonna change my color again because we need to fit two drawings in between each of these extreme drawings, right? And so we just need to divide up this space. And again, you can just eyeball it. So go here, 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 and here. Okay, so there we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so now that we have that guide for ourselves, it's simply a matter of getting the foot in the right position as we draw these breakdown drawings and the in-betweens. So let's work on the next two drawings, uh, the breakdowns of the low and the high points. Um, so if you recall, the low point is comes after the contact pose and it is the point where the head and perhaps the body are at the lowest point in their up and down movement right and then the high point is um, after the passing pose a couple frames after we get um, kind of like that maximum height of the head before we lower down into the contact so I'm gonna add a new frame in here. Turn my onion skinning back on, make the sky blue so that we can see what we're working with. Here we go. So I'm just tracing the body shape here. So we want to be just a little bit lower than the contact pose, which is the red drawing here. So um, I'm gonna go to just about like that, bring it just a little bit forward, just a little bit more tilt because we're catching our momentum. All right, so first of all, let's find out where the foot is going to be. So if we have the contact pose, right? Uh, there's our contact pose and we're doing the low point which is drawing number four so the heel is going to be right here at drawing number four and then we can get a really nice bend getting that nice solid foot shape that's sort of really connected with the ground and we'll probably have to go back and do a little bit of adjustment and then what's happening with this foot back here um, this foot has started to push off of the ground and is um, is starting to lift up in the air and swing forward. So we're actually, we're not really concerned about this chart anymore with this foot that's gonna be in the air. What we're thinking of is we're thinking of what is the arc between this drawing and this drawing, right? So this foot is swinging forward here. We're gonna get a bend in the knee. Let's start with kind of getting the knee in a line. I'm looking at that arc there. I'm thinking, okay, we're gonna probably be swinging about halfway and trying to get that little bit of overlap that shows the leg being connected. Knee, keeping that in a line and a nice arc. I can fill in the rest. However you wanna draw the, the feet, you can get a little bit of personality in the feet. So let's turn our onion skinning off and take a look here. Okay, not too bad. And just so we can keep these things straight, I'm gonna color that guy in, right? Okay, so if we flip back and forth, you can already kind of see we've got some good motion going on here. Now, what's gonna help us with the high point actually is going to be if we get our second contact pose on drawing number 13. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna make a new frame here, turn my onions getting back on, turn off the frame after. So I just see this. So um, this is going to be frame number 13. I should be numbering these, let's see. So let's make this 13. This one, this is drawing number four. 
can even label it. This is the low. And this is drawing number seven, passing. Just got to keep everything straight, right? Okay, so here's number 13. This is contact two. Um, so body position, largely the same if we're going for super symmetrical. Okay, so what is the main difference here? It's going to be um, this leg, the right leg is gonna be in the front, right? And then the left leg is going to be back here. So we can sort of uh, just trace these. Maybe you wanna have a little bit of variation because none of us are perfectly symmetrical, right? Now, um, on drawing number 13, this is the leg that is farthest from the camera. And now we need to move it to the right spot. So I'm gonna pick it up and move it over here. So now, there we go. Okay, so now we can do our high point, which is gonna be drawing number 10. I forgot to put that on our guide, but that's gonna come between the, so you have contact, low, passing, high, and then to the new contact. So somewhere in between here, add another frame. Let's make this one red, turn our onion skinning back on. Gonna put this back. There we go. This is gonna be the high point, so it's the point where the body is the highest in its arc, right? So we can trace the body shape here and then use the handy dandy little move tool. So we just want this a little bit tilted out in the high point and just a little bit higher. In-betweening this is gonna be fun. We're gonna to have to get pretty precise with the in-betweening, but uh, we don't wanna overdo it. You don't want too much up and down bounce. So um, so here we're starting, and what's our frame before? Our frame before is the passing pose, right? And so we can figure out where the heel is gonna be. It's gonna be at number 10. And I didn't actually write the number down, but uh, that's okay we know what we're doing at this point, right? Um, so the heel is here and this is kind of like a, it's almost like we're sort of starting to stretch upward to get to that high point. Um, I may have made this a little bit too high, but what might be happening at this point is we might start going up on the toe a little bit. So still trying to keep the heel aligned with that blue mark there, but um, to get that extra little bit of lift we're gonna have to go up, moving out. This right leg is swinging forward to get that foot moving. Make sure our arcs are in line here. And try and keep the length of each segment of the limb looking pretty good. So the foot can, I mean, really when you're walking, the foot is pretty close to the ground. It's almost sort of brushing the ground, but not quite, right? You don't wanna be tripping. So now we have our key poses all drawn out. We've got our foot sliding back. We've got this nice up and down movement with the body. And all that's left for this first step is to do the in-betweening. But I think this video is long enough, so we will put that process into the next video.